Hello and welcome everyone to the box opening of Divine Dragon Apocrypha, which is GBT14, which is technically going to be the last G set, or at least for the story, but there's still the Bermuda booster coming up, so that's actually going to be the last G set, I guess you could say. So today we're going to be opening up not just one, not even two, but three, three boxes of GBT14 for you guys. These boxes were provided by Bushra themselves, so thank you very much for providing me with the product. I'll do my best uh, in this video to review the box well the, review the whole set really uh this is gonna be more of a straightforward review in terms of like we're gonna go over what we pull how the meta is gonna be shaping up and then if you want a more detailed uh you know just more detailed look into the set that's what the set breakdown is for which i've been doing for every set so far so looking around the box this is obviously the more recent box design that we've had, as well as we have a few, you know, things to note. There's a total of six secret rares, and so there's also some new uh, reprints, including uh, Heavenly Decree, Alt Mile, Morfessa, and Tsukumoro Khan. Tsukumoro Khan is a pretty big one. Well, I think all three of them are quite big reprints, but I think it's very important. There's a total of three ZRs, one of them being Mr. Cover Card Gize, and then there's two GRs, which are gonna be Fides, as well as um heritage and then the rest of the rarities are fairly simple but there's also a chance of pulling the fabled Giza pack from this set which is essentially Giza together with all six Zeroth dragons so that's a very rare chance to pull that but it will be pretty cool the back of the box does have separators as they have been recently so there's the store on this side I really love the way that the his the um, Castillo's voice actor says dust is just great. And then um the other part is Ultima. I actually do need an Ultima for Angel Feathers, so that's actually quite nice. Uh the only thing I have to point out is that he seems to have chicken legs, which I'm not exactly sure how to feel about that, but nevertheless, he's still a very cool card. So we're gonna take the first box a little bit slower, and then we're gonna speed it up for the two after that. And also normally in this set, uh there is support for uh, the Gear Chronicle, Shadow Paladin, Royal Paladin, Genesis, Nobutama, Dark Irregulars, Clans, and Will Cray Elemental, I guess you can call it a deck now, but there are also box toppers in each box, which are either the Night Rose or the Harry Strides. Now, uh, you might have noticed I'm using my playmat that I got at Daivangasai in Osaka, so this is the special Halloween one that they had, and so that wasn't the only thing that was exclusive at Daivangasai for the Japanese version of Vanguard. One of them was the Night Rose and Harry sets, which included promo strides for both Night Rose and Harry and so we finally got them in English too so first we have a small little leaflet that advertises the Butterfly X as well as Vanguard G anime on the YouTube channel as well as Dragoborn uh, Booster Pack 3 as well as Bang Dream which is finally coming in English on well both the App Store and the Google Play Store so that's very cool and so here we can see we receive one of either Harry or Night Rose. And so here is Night Rose. So as you can see in the packet itself, she's actually foil. And that's really, really cool. So I'm super happy to see that because it was a big question for a lot of us if they're going to end up being foil or not. So on that note, I think we can get into the actual box. So let's get right into it. So opening up the first pack, there's going to be a lot of changes to the meta in this set and hopefully we get some of those meta changing cards uh, so that we can go through it. So here we have an Ozai, so this is one of the Nobutama support cards. Then we have a Revolting Bolt, which is uh, one of the new Dark Regulars. Tinking Angels, so Genesis support. This is Fomnach. So she's called Fomlach in English. She's actually quite nice because she has the hand skill we can discard her and rest one of your ritual rearguards and draw a card. The discard part is nice because it isn't on GB1, meaning you can drop it and like even on turn one, like if you have a ritual rearguard and then you're already fueling your ritual cost, which is really big. Plus she has a GB2 ritual five. If you have a great four bang with Lord in its name, she gets plus 7k and resist and that resist is also quite big. But I really like her for that first skill because it actually fuels your ritual. So, moving along, this is the Crit Trigger for Royal Paladin, sadly not one of the uh, unlockers. And then we have a Felex. This is also a very important card for Brave. So if you have a Vanguard with Brave ability, on both yours and your opponent's turn, he will get plus 1k and resist. Again, very nice. And then he has GB2 Brave. During your turn, if you have a Vanguard with Old Mile in its name, all your front row units get plus 2k and resist. So he just dishes out results, resists so easily. And then... <gasps> oh! Oh my actual god! I cannot believe this. I cannot actually believe this. 
I swear, I, I, I have nothing, I, wow. I'm actually lost for words. I'm actually lost for words. So this little friend right here is the Xeroth Dragon for United Sanctuary Ultima. So his skill, obviously you have to ultimate stride him, but his skill is when you stride him, you cannot must two. If you do, you search your deck for four cards and shuffle your deck. You call two of them to different rearguard circles and put the rest of them on the top of your order on the top of your deck in any order, and until end of turn, choose all of your units for your trigger effects. That part is so big, but this card is amazing because I am an Angel Feather player, and this card just makes Angel Feather very legit right now because I feel like Angel Feather was kind of lacking a little bit recently, but thanks to a bunch of stuff, this, this card helps a lot because with Angel Feather, you go through rescue checks, and rescue checks do count as trigger checks, so this will actually go off of rescue checks. So I'm very happy to be pulling this because this actually made one of my favorite decks. Uh, you know, this card makes it a lot better now, so I'm very happy to actually get the Ultima. Oh my god. And so let's keep on going. I swear, I had no idea that this would happen, but that is actually incredible. So getting the Ultima from the first pack, nevertheless, is actually amazing. So let us continue. We have some, there is some Gear Chronicle support, uh, some ZTBs here and there, obviously Luar support too. New starter for Luar that I'm liking quite a lot has Ritual 3. When he's retired from your guard circle for the effect or cost of your card with the Ritual ability, you can slide him into the soul to counter charge 1. Again, not GB restricted, although a bit harder to use, but still I think very good. Not, maybe not the best call in the control meta, but I think it's still a very nice card. Reprint of Hypnosis Sheep, a very big reprint here, I think that's very nice. The new form of Kukurihime, which is the uh, old Genesis crit trigger. This time she has a skill that you can put her into your soul as an act, and if you have a grade 3 greater vanguard, you give one of your units plus 3 cans on F turn, and if you have a face up card in your Jizen, you draw a card, which is very cool. And then this is one of the new uh, really good cards for Regalia, which got a lot of support this set. So this is Freya. So when you call her, if you have a grade 3 greater vanguard with Regalia in its name, you can count on one if you do draw a card and give two regalias in their card names from your drop zone and take two regalias in from your drop zone and put them into your soul. So that's really nice. And then she has a strong GB2. When your Vanguard with Regalia in this card name attacks, this unit gets plus three K until end of turn. Meaning that if your Vanguard attacks twice, then she'll get a total of plus six, which is definitely a very nice thing to have. So that's the second pack. So we can start speeding it up a little bit. Um, some of the other things I've heard that like, I've been talking to some of my friends who have been uh, testing around with the new support and the, in my opinion, one of the scariest decks from the set is actually Shiranui because of both Zanki and Rine. I'm hoping that we can pull at least one of them to talk about it because they're both super strong. So here is the new uh, G-Guard for Dark Irregulars. So this one is Druj Nasu, I think you can call it that. So as a continuous, if the number of cards in your soul is eight or more, she gets plus 10k shield, which is already a very strong start. And then her other skill is when you guard with her, you can choose one of your grade one or greater rear guards with the darkness ability and put into your soul to draw a card. So it can convert a basically rear guard that's not doing too much into a card in your hand, which is very big as well. And then the last card that we have in the pack is the effect heal trigger for Shadow Paladin and it has Revenger in the name which is really really big so very happy about this as well I think that her art is also really cool so finally Shadow Paladin's got their effect heal I think they've been waiting for it for quite a while so that's definitely nice to have and it's also Revenger which is super cool so let's move right along so here we have we're gonna start seeing some repeats soon, I think, because uh, we've already seen some cards here. So, like the Femnach and stuff like that. So there's a new stand trigger for Dark Irregulars, which has GB1 Darkness Act put into Soul. If you have a Great 4 Vanguard, draw a card and give one of your guys plus 3k. That's actually quite nice because you convert a card into hand and get the 3k, so that's not bad. I know this one sees play, Succubus of Jealousy. When you call her, if you have a Vanguard with a Darkness ability, you may look at top 5 cards of your deck. If you do put up to 2 grade 1 or greater cards with the Darkness ability from them into your soul and shuffle your deck. So, if you lose your soul for free, which is definitely nice, and she gets GB1 Darkness, she gets plus 2k continuous. So, that is gonna go off every turn as long as you're in Darkness. And we have this beautiful reprint of Succubus of Pure Love. I am a big fan of this new illustration. It's actually really good looking, so that's pretty nice. So far, we're one ZR, well, V1 ZR, as well as one double rare down, so that's very cool. So, oh, Baleful Repressor, this is a pretty big card. When it attacks GB2 Darkness, if the number of cards in your soul is 8 or more, until then that battle gets plus 10, and opponent can't guard with grade 0. So, in considering that Dark Yelgar has also got a new stride, this is a pretty strong card, and it's only a common while we're at it. Here we have a Gyun Mi. 
So this has Brave, you may retire a Yunmi for the cost of stride. This is actually really good. Uh, this like It just makes you stride for free as long as you're on Brave, which is very cool. Well, for free, but it's also searchable because that's Brave in the name, so I think that's very strong. Brave is a ridiculous deck after this set. It's so strong that like I cannot believe it myself, and it's gonna be a very hard matchup for me as well. So some more Regalia support, a neutral uh, draw. Here is the G Guard for Royal Paladin, which is Defend Whole Dragon. So he has Brave. When you guard with him during the battle of your opponent's Vanguard attack, choose one of your units with a Brave ability and it cannot be hit until the end of that battle. So essentially, it's a perfect guard for your rear guard. So pretty nice, and I do like it. And then we have one of the definitely played cards for Zodiac Time Beasts, which is Merry Block Dragon. So as deck and drop zone skill, if your Vanguard is grade 3 or greater, this unit gets grade plus 2, so it counts as a grade 3 in those situations. I also really like the, the rare pattern this time, it's really cool. And then uh, the GB1 skill, when this unit boosts, you may have this unit get plus 2k until the end of that battle for each of your Zodiac Time Beats. Beasts. If you do bind this unit face up at the end of that battle, that's not a bad thing either because in the end you do want to be binding things anyway in the deck because you're going to be able to actually take advantage of that. So I think overall that's quite good. So moving right along, I still can't believe we got the Ultima. So here is the Cray Elemental in this set, which is Bikkun. So he basically has the skill that when you guard with him, if your opponent's vanguard attack two or more times during this turn, choose one of your units and it can't be hit until that battle. Uh, this has been seen play in Night Rose, which I think is pretty nice because it gives you the flexibility and like it, you can actually pull it off quite consistently in Night Rose, which I think is very nice. Oh, here's a new starter, the new Milius for Brave. So it's also very cool. Subjugate Dragon, another generic crit. Uh, this is the Strike Fodder for Regalias. And then we have the Heal for Gear Chronicle, which is again a Zodiac Time Beast. So this is the same effect heal as for Shadow Paladin, but we also got it for Gear Chronicle, which is very nice. The fact that it's ETB obviously is uh, very important. And for those of you that don't know, ZTB does stand for Zodiac Time Beast. It's just a bit of a faster way to say it. Mist Frog, this card, Honestly, like this card does so much in the current shoot enemy builds because like it's so effective. Just from the first wave of tournament results that we've seen from GBT14, this card has been amazing. So GB1, when other dominated units attack during your turn, you may put them into the soul. If you do draw a card and that unit gets plus six cancel on that battle. So you get a card in hand in exchange for using him and you know, a card in your soul, which effectively you will use too, but you also get plus six K, which can hit for magical numbers. You can give this to a five K to a to starter to make it hit for 11. That's just insane. It's actually ridiculous how good this card is. So definitely very scary. So let's keep on going through. This is kind of interesting, You can, when you discard it for stride, you give your Vanguard plus 10k, so old, well basically like the Vanguard in Regalia restands, so it will be getting the plus 10k on restand, which is nice. Another Hypnosis Sheep reprint, another Strife Fighter, ooh, and we have, oh, oh yeah, they put the common on the back, that sometimes happens. Um, this is Balam, which is the new stride for uh, Dark Regulars that I mentioned. So he's got two skills, one of them is Act Once Per Turn GB1 and Persona Flip. You choose one of your opponent's rear guards, and this unit gets the power of that unit and Drive plus one, and then you retire that unit. You may Soul Charge two for each face-up card in your G-Zone. That is just so many things in one skill. You accelerate your face-up G-Units, you get rid of one of your opponent's units, you gain power, you gain a Drive check, and you also gain Soul Charge if you want to. That it just does so much, but that doesn't end there. He has a GB3, Darkness. If the number of cards in your soul is 13 or more, your opponent cannot call grade 1 cards from hand to Guardian Circle. It's just incredible. This card is like, it's just incredible how good it is. It does so much in one card, and like the nice thing is only a triple rare, so it's a lot easier to get it. And therefore, like, even though I would say it's a 4 of, because you can stride it in most scenarios, apart from maybe like until you get GB3, but even then I would stride it on first stride if I'm honest, but it's just such a good card, so it's definitely not something to laugh at. Oh, here's Budai, the new starter for uh, Shiranui. And then this is Yu Charba. That's an interesting way to spell it. Again, another good ritual card. Uh, ritual 3 during the battle, this unit boosted. This unit gets plus 3k. And then GB1 once per turn, when your other rear guard with the ritual ability is retired for the effect or cost of your card, you may put the retired card into your soul. So, pretty nice. You also fill up your soul, so it's quite good. Stand trigger for Genesis. Here is a G guard for Nubatama, which is the new one. 
So when you guard with it, number of cards in your opponent's hand is three or more. Until in the battle, he gets plus 5k. And if it's six or more, he gets another 10k shield. So 30k shield for no cost, definitely very nice. And here's another Felix, so also quite good. So we're starting to see repeating rares. And now we're one half through the first side of the... Well, we're halfway through the first box is what I'm trying to say. So I'll speed it up a little bit until we see some cards that are important to mention, like Pictus actually. So his skill is when you ride or call him, you can uh, discard a card from your hand. If you just search your deck for an old mile, I'll reveal it. And if you rode this guy, then you ride that old mile a stand and then, but then if this guy was called cold instead of being ridden then you return him to your hand and then you shuffle your deck then he has gb1 brave at the beginning of your battle phase he gets plus 5k until end of turn stays for that turn which is really cool but it's not an on attack so it's only going to be 5k it's not going to stack but really good card i've seen some old mile players run him and then we have another two rares here one of them being dialad which is essentially um a better sword breaker so it's ritual one when you call it from deck if you have vanguard with the ritual ability soul blast one to draw a card and we have another succubus of jealousy so Let's continue. Again, I'm just going to be stopping now for the actual uh, bit more meta-relevant cards, but a lot of them are common, so I can't help but stop. One of them is Chrono Dran Z, which is a new starter, and it's very, very strong. So his skill is Forerunner, and then when your Greater or Greater Zodiac Time Beast is ridden, you may bind him face up. If you do look at top five cards of your deck, reveal up to one Great Three or Great One card from among them, put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. And then on top of that, Bind Zone GB1, discard a card to put him back to your hand from the Bind Zone, meaning you can use him several times or use him as a tanky shield, but this is really good because it can search out your Great Three as well, if you didn't have it already. So that's super, super good. Another good card is Gaonan. So when you call him, Cannon Blast 1 and choose a grade 1 ritual from your hand and discard it if you do draw two cards. So again, very important card for ritual because not GB1, you can fuel your ritual very fast and therefore it's really, really good. So we're gonna speed up a bit. This, again, uh, this crit you can bind to counter charge one, which is really good. It's also already a time beast. And then Dagda is also quite good. GB1 ritual five, when he attacks a Vanguard, if you have a Luard Vanguard, you can come us one and retire one of your grade one or less rear guards. If you do search your deck for two grade one cards and call them separate rear guards, circles and shuffle your deck. So again, very good this time on GB1 at ritual five though, but the ritual five honestly is not a steep condition whatsoever. And I apologize if it sometimes focuses out a bit, but the camera sometimes does that uh, when I bring the cards too close. So, you know, I think it's, it's it should be understandable, but it happens sometimes. So, you know, can't, can't be helped too much. Here's the rare strike for Dark Regulars. And then again, our next double rare is the effect heal for Dark Irregulars, which also looks very, very nice. So that's already three, three tri double rares and they're all the uh, effect heals. So that's very cool. We should still have another triple rare left, if not two. Oops, I put this in the wrong pile. Um, this is a common. Yes, I put it in the wrong, in the wrong stack order. So we're gonna go through quite a few cards. There's some interesting deck concepts popping up in general. Ooh, here we have Slaptail Dragon. Whoa, oh, whoa, 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 whoa! That is a strong pack. Triple rare and double rare in one go. Okay, so Slaptail Dragon uh, has Ritual Three. When your other grade one is placed on Rearguard Circle, if you have Vanguard with Ritual Ability, that placed unit gets plus three gains on a turn, which is really strong. And then both deck and drop zone. If you have a grade four Vanguard with Lord in its name, this card gets grade minus one, so it counts as a grade one, so it can be called by your effect very easily. So this is a staple in the ward now. This is actually a really good card, so very important. But another staple in Lord as well, Dragabus Lord himself. So he has two skills. First one of which is act once per turn, soul blast one and, and persona flip and retire one of your rear guards. You search your deck for up to two grade one cards, call them to separate rear guard circles and shuffle your deck. And then if you call two units with a ritual ability, choose one of your opponent's rear guards and retire it. On top of that has GB3 ritual X. All your front row units get plus 10k for every four grade one cards in your drop zone. So the X stands for like whichever variable is in that skill. So in this case it's four. And so the, I didn't quite show off the triple rare pattern, but it's very nice this set. It's like this like, these like lines going from side to side. So this is a really nice illustration too, it's drawn by Lack, who draws all the Luards, draws all the Ashes as well, so that's really cool. So another very good uh, triple rare to get, this is very important, one of the two very important uh, foil, well there's a lot of actually very important Luard cards in this set, but both Drag Abyss and Drag Fall are very important for the builds to come from now on. Oh, this is a nice little tech for Shiranui. Like Shiranui in general is very strong because it has this like very uh, good pushing power now because like the new strider in it can actually force your opponent to call cards from hand on like your turn which is just ridiculous because you make them lose out on so much so it's just it's actually very very strong 
Oh, this card, Ereshigal, is, uh, I think it's played in just Revelation in general. I think it's played with, I'm pretty sure I've seen her played with Amaruda, so that's very nice. She has Revelation, and once per turn, act uh, Soul Blast 3, choose up the two of your units and stand them, and if you stand this unit, put one card from the bottom of your deck into your hand. So, pretty cool because you can put cards to the bottom of the deck, obviously, so works in that way. And then we have, oh, we have a Sadatsugu, which is a very good card for Shiranui. When it attacks a Vanguard, if you have a Vanguard with Shiranui in its name, it gets plus 2k until the end of that battle. And then GB1 at the end of the battle that your other Rearguard attack the Vanguard, you can count as 1. If you do retire the unit that attacked, draw a card, and this unit loses this ability for that turn. So you can target your opponent's units too, which is very cool. So very strong card. And here we have uh, one of the new Genesis strides. So this one is Revelation. She has two skills. Once per turn, count as 1 and Persona Flip. Soul Charge 3, your opponent chooses one of their Rearguards for each card with a revelation ability soul charged and retires them so up to three very strong and then gb3 all your rear guards get plus 2k for each card in your soul with a revelation ability so again this is a nice like a mid-range i'd say stride because it can push numbers but it's like it's a nice in between between like your first stride and what, like your game ending strides so i think i quite like her I think she's like she's fairly good i wouldn't say that she's she's bad by any means so overall i think she's quite nice so, gonna start going through these a little bit faster because we are seeing repeats, but oh, we have, we're blessed by Mr. Tony Taka himself. This is the new Minerva, the brand new Minerva Stride Ultimate Regalia of Almighty. Whoa, I didn't expect to have such a powerful box. So she has two skills, one is act once per turn, soul blast, three regalias, and persona flip. This unit gets plus 10k power and drive plus one, meaning she's be, she'll be attacking for at least 36k with four drive checks. And then once per turn GB3, when she does attack, if you're on GB3 at the, that is, you can soul blast six regalias and discard a card from hand. If you do at the end of the battle, stand all of your units with regalia on their card name and they get drive minus three until end of turn, so that means including her. But on, you know, when you actually activate this ability, because she's attacking with four drives, um, on the second attack she will attack with one drive. So, still very good, and this brought back Regalia's hard. Like, this card on her own is just so strong, and Tony Taka's new art is just, oh, it's so nice. So, that was a very strong box. I think this last one should not be a foil. Never mind, it is. I, I admit, that God, we got six. This is a very strong box. ZR, three triples, and six doubles. So that's very, very powerful. So we have a reprint of the ZTB Stride Fodder, as well as the perfect guard for Dark Irregulars. This is, again, very, very nice. Quick overview of the first box. So these are our doubles. So we got the Dark Regulars Perfect Guard, the Genesis Revelation Stride, Slaptail Dragon, or is it Dragon or Dragoon? Dragon. And then three effect heals, shadows, gears, and Dark Irregulars. So that's very nice. Now for triples, we got Minerva, uh, Dragabus Luard, as well as Balam. And then we got the ZR Ultima. So very cool. Overall, these are all like very, especially these three are very impactful strides. So we're gonna quickly clean up and then go over the second box. I'm also curious to see what promo we're gonna get in that second one. So going into the third, or rather, second box. My bad, got ahead of myself. Uh, I'm just gonna crack this one open again. Uh, there is still some things from this set that I would like to see. Again, like I said, the new Shiranui is just ridiculously strong and I have very big expectations. Honestly, like, what I like about the set is that it mixes up the meta a lot. Like, we're already doing good from Stargate, but like, just looking at the clans, like, Zodiac Time Beast is relevant again. There's also Time Leap sort of coming back because you can do some insane combos on the Dust turn. And then we've got Shadows that obviously got all the Luart support. Royals got like all, all the Brave support. Honestly, Old Mile is just ridiculous. Like the new Fetus brings so much to the deck. But I also really like the new Grade 3 Old Mile as well because of the extra credit it has on the rear. And then Genesis is like basically Minerva that you already saw. New Batama, as I said, Shiranui Dark Irregulars. The new Sharot is just ooh, as well as Gastil himself. So it's just overall very good. But also just Ultima and Dust bring a lot to the table. And so I think they're both very strong cards. So just gonna nicely tuck this in if I can. Yeah. Okay. So again, the advertisement paper for the anime and Dragonborn on the game. And here we have the Harry. So this is what the foil Harry looks like. So very nice. So this is the other uh, promo stride that I mentioned. So this time it is Harry. Again, like both the Night Rose helps Night Rose quite a bit, but the Harry revived the deck. Harry is now 
like competitively viable it is a competitively very strong deck and so for that i find it very very strong and just overall incredible as a deck itself so and it's a very good link joker matchup and just overall it's it's just so strong it's not just the, like the good link joker matchup but it's also like you can spam happiness collector to draw a bunch of cards you can just in general do so much to you know just just help yourself in the game if i'm allowed to say that and we have our first triple uh sorry i was kind of spamming through this but this is a new grade three Sharrot. so he has two skills when your geonet strides you may soul charge two if you do choose a card with the darkness ability from your soul put it into your hand and choose the one card from your hand and put it into your soul so it lets you basically toolbox for anything which is ridiculous for those of you that don't know toolboxing means just like searching for a lot of like Th searching through cards at a massive uh, availability so because your soul is basically gonna be bigger than your deck most of the time this lets you every single turn to toolbox for for anything in your soul it's toolbox for perfect guard a stride fodder basically anything which is just so amazing it just has to have the darkness ability then the second effect is darkness at the end of the turn you may choose one of your grade one or greater rear guards and put it into your soul so you can recycle it back into the toolbox if you do your opponent has to choose one of your rear guards and retire it and if the number of cards in your soul is eight or more you may counter charge one so this also gives you this gives you essentially you can limit your resources so that you don't blast through them too fast and like on top of that i'm gonna put this here again on top of like working through your resources this also has a bit of field control your opponent chooses but that doesn't matter too much because of how fast you're retiring everything and the fact that you toolbox with the on strike well with the on strike skill is like just incredible so i really like it for that and i think it's a very strong card oh i see what our next triple is this time we have all the triples right off the bat first we have the g guard for regalias so when you guard with it, you choose up to four cards and you drop some different grades, put them into your soul, and if you put two or more cards until the end of that battle, this thing is plus 5k shield, and if you put four cards, then another plus 10k shield on top of that. And once again, we do have the Minerva, so that's two Minervas down, very strong, as I said, for the Regalia deck, and just overall looking very good, but we already went over her, so we don't have to go over her again. But again, very, very, very strong card, honestly, just a honest just meta changing like a lot of these decks in the set are meta changing or maybe not so much meta changing i think that's a bit like i'm using strong words also here's the nubutama uh, effect heal which is also nice basically every clan is important to set got an effect heal if you didn't have one already but the thing with like it's not a meta changing deck i would say but it's a deck that can like be brought back into the meta i don't think anything apart from like gize and i guess dust actually changes the meta too hard but there's still like very good cards that are brought into the uh, meta. So here we have Metal Party Dragon. So this goes together with a grade one that we saw in the last box. So this unit cannot attack if the number of cards in your bind zone is zero. So you have to have one bound, but with Chrono Dragon Z, that's not a problem. And then GB1, at the end of the battle, this unit boosted. You may count us one and bind it face up. If you do call up to one face up, grade three and grade one zodiac time, beast from your bind zone to separate rear guard circles. So again, that interacts well with the bind zone. But we have another triple rare. Like we're going through the triple rares immediately in this box, which is Dragfall Luard, which is the new Luard that a lot of people are enjoying. So he has Ritual X. You may pay Candle Blast four. Choose a normal unit from your drop zone and put it on the bottom of your deck. This cost is reduced by Count Blast 1 for each grade 1 card in your drop zone as the cost for Stride and Ultimate Stride. So essentially if you have 4 grade 1s, this is going to cost nothing, so you Stride for free. But if you have less than that, then you're going to be... If you have 0, you're going to play Count Blast 4, which you probably shouldn't. But even if you have a 3, you can only Count Blast 1, so it's also quite nice. Works both for Stride and Ultimate Stride, which is really good. And then when you do Stride, you can Count Blast 1. If you do, you search your deck for a grade 1 or lower card, call to Rearguard Circle and shuffle your deck. And if that unit has the Ritual Ability, you choose one of your opponents rear guards in the same column as that unit and retire it so again good field control and just overall like this lord is some good stuff lord got some amazing support in this set again drawn by the almighty lack i really like lax art so that's why i keep saying it and so there's a lot of really good art in the set as a whole like just going through the commons honestly you can see i think and then uh a lot of these rares are repeats so we can go through them a bit faster so i think these next two boxes won't take as long it would still be nice to see a dust i wouldn't be complaining about a dust uh because it's like dust is such a meta it is a meta changing card in my opinion because spike brothers can do insane combo turns on dust magia can do amazing combo turns on dust time leap come, comes back because of dust 
like Dark Irregulars obviously can do a lot with Dust as well, and so overall it's just a very good addition to the game. Um, it's just, it's so strong. Dust is just ridiculously strong. So I'm personally more of an Ultima person myself, because uh, I actually play it. I don't play any Dark Zone clans apart from Pale Moon really, but I only play Silverthorns. Um, so yeah. We haven't gone over this rare actually, which is Goddess of Karmic Wing uh, Ningle, which has Revelation, and then if no card was put into your soul during this turn due to card effects, this unit cannot attack a Vanguard. So it is 10k base, but at a very interesting condition of like why it can't attack. Here's another Slap Tail, which is again the staple in Shadow Paladin or in Lured that I mentioned earlier. So very important. And I'm already through the first side of the box, so we are going a bit faster because we've been through most of the very important common cards that I wanted to mention. So I think uh, this shouldn't take too long, I suppose. So seeing some more of the important cards here. And now we have the Effect Heal for Genesis. So I think we now have most of them. Uh, we're missing the Royal Paladin one, and I think... I think that's about it, actually. I think the Royal Paladin one is the only one we don't have yet. So that's nice. Oh, oh, ooh, we got the Double Rare, which is the new Angelica. So again, this is the new Angelica Grade 3 Regalia. So when you write it, you can choose a Regalia normal unit in Scardian from your drop zone and put it into your soul if you draw a card. So it recycles, stuff into your soul, gets you an extra draw, which is very nice. When you stride into a Regalia, however, Candle Bust 1, if you do look at the top four cards of your deck, put one of them into your hand, put one into your soul, and put the rest into your drop zone. So, it also, if you play the Legion variant, that this also will fuel your, your Legion. So I'll just put these uh, here a bit so you can see them a little bit better, I think. Uh, on the other one, oh, this is the ZTB, Zodiac Time Beast G-Guard, which is really good for Heritage. So, skill is when you guard with it, soul blast one if the number of cards in your bind zone is one or more. And then if you do, until the end of that battle, she gets plus 5k shield, and if it's five or more, then another 15k shield. So it's a 35k shield, and it has Zodiac Time Beast in the name, which is just ridiculous. It's such a good card, and the fact that it also helps with your heritage is just, oh my god. It does so much at once. It's like, G-Guards have honestly gotten very strong over time. Oh, here's another uh, Kukurihime. And another Felix. We've seen quite a lot of him. Here's another Chrono Dran Z. A lot of just good cards in this set. Honestly, like, I'm happy to be... I'm also very happy to be given this opportunity by Bushiroad. Ooh! GR! Nice! We got Immortality... Immortal Holy Sword Fides. Um, before I do go over him, I just also want to thank Bushiroad for giving me the, this opportunity again. Because, like, working with him for the commentary was actually just one of my most favorite experiences in life. And just a very, like, amazing, just life-changing one, honestly. So... Now that that sentimental talk is over, let's go over Fetus. He has an act once per turn. Count us one and flip any unit face up. Until end of turn, this gets the skill. If your opponent has only one guardian, the attack of your units with a brave ability will hit regardless of power. So your opponent basically has to guard with something and then guard again for it to actually hit, which is super strong. So you're always asking them, even if it's a 5k shield guard, they have to drop another card just to guard against this guy, which is super strong. But that's not it, because GB4 Brave, when this unit attacks, you have a hard card with Old Malin's name. Search your deck for up to three cards, call them into separate rear guard circles, and shuffle your deck. Oh my god, it's... That second effect is free, by the way, so you only pay the cost for the first one to like make your opponent drop more cards, while also gaining more cards yourself, so this is a very good GR. Both GRs in this set are very good. I think this one is slightly better, actually, because it does a lot more for Alt Mile, while Heritage is like, you will use it, but you won't use it as much uh, per game as you would use Fetus in Alt Mile. So, very, very cool, and I like the plot plot twists with Alt, Alt Mile in um, in the actual anime, so that's that was pretty, pretty nice. So, we got the GR in this box, so these have been very strong boxes. We got GR, ZR, and so, like, honestly, this is just amazing. So, I'd like, ooh, Gastille, Evil God Bishop Gastille. I've seen the people playing some very interesting decks with him, where they play um, things like the Librarian and stuff like that, where you can, like, they have a lot of on-call skills that you can copy. So let's go over his skills and explain why that works. So Vanguard and Rearguard Circle, at the beginning of your right phase, with number of cards in your soul, it's eight or more. Choose one of your grade three Rearguards with the Darkness ability, and you may return it to your hand. That actually can include him. So if he's on Rearguard Circle, you can actually return him to your hand, which is nice. Then GB2 Darkness, when this card would be placed on Rearguard Circle, you choose up to two grade two cards from your soul and put them into your drop zone, and this card gets all the abilities of those cards. So you can copy things like Librarian in order to, you know, get his skill twice even if you uh, put two of them to the drop zone, so it's very nice for that. And Castillo is an interesting card. I know a lot of people were very excited for him. Uh, it was a mixed reaction at first, but I think in the end a lot of people like him because he actually does do quite a lot for the deck, and I know people are playing him in Shawrock decks as well. 
And then finally, we have uh, the new Perfect Guard for, oh, not Perfect Guard, G Guard for Shadow Paladin, which is Dark Veil Dragon. When you guard with it, Soul Blast 1, if you do this, you can get plus 5k into another battle for every 2 grade 1 cards in your drop zone. So this can guard for like 45k and like things like that quite easily. So, uh, wrapping up the second box, again, a very, very good box with a lot of good cards. But honestly, basically everything in this set is really good, so it's kind of hard to not get a good box. So we have Castile, Angelica, the heal for Genesis, another Slap Tail, and the heal for Nuvatama. And then for grade threes, we have the Dragfall Luard, again the Minerva, as well as the new Sharrot. And then on top of that, we got the GR Fetus. So, very good box, so let's quickly clean up and then go over the last third box. All right, finally getting into the third box of, and last box actually of GBT 13 Divine Dragon Apocrypha. Once again, provided by Bushroad, which were just, ah, oh, they're so kind, so kind for doing this. <clears throat> Now, while I know that, I'm pretty sure the uh, rate of getting a Giza is very low, so I don't expect to get one whatsoever, but um, some interesting Giza decks are actually, uh, well actually my favorite part of Giza is uh, not just not really coming up with the decks, but coming up with names for the decks where you can play Giza in. So like, you can play Giza with Gavrail, and then you can call it like Givrail, or like you can play it with No Seal and then call it like Giziel, or you can play with like Thavas and call it Thaze, or Tha... Yeah, Faze, I guess you could say. Ooh, we got the second one being the Night Rose. That's very cool. So, two Night Roses, one Harry. So, they're pretty equal in distribution, I, I think I'd say. So, let's go over the first pack of the next box. So, very nice that they printed these promos, honestly. I think a lot of people were very excited for them. So, it's very good to see them at long last. Checking if there's any other cards that we should be talking about from the comments. So let's continue right along. Another Minerva, the third one. Three for three. Every box had a Minerva. That is really strong. Wow. So I guess I guess I'm blessed by Tony Taka. His art definitely is amazing, so I'm not complaining. So continuing on. Haha! -ha, we have a Freya and a Dagda. So again, two cards we already went over. One thing I noticed uh, is that a lot of people have different ways to open packs. Like some people slide it from the side, you know, some people just like like open it like the like, you know, a packet of crisps kind of thing or like, oh, there we go. I open it like that. Well, I open it kind of like from the back and I know some people tend to notice that and remark on it. Oops, uh, we got another ZTBG guard. And so just some random thing that I wanted to point out. But yeah, but actually, like, as I mentioned, some of the probably the best I think Giza deck is either with No Steel or with Gavriel, just Angel Feathers as a whole, because you can use this amazing card that we got as a participation, or as a free fight promo rather, um, in the spring circuit of BCS last year. This is Hiniel, so if you got your playset back then, you're definitely very lucky. And then, uh, so because of that, you can use Giza very easily because she's not GB1, so you can rescue early, meaning you can have a higher chance of triggering, just triggering in general. So triggering your Ninion Gize as well, and so getting your face up Xerox dragons in there and just having a good time as a whole. Here's the, uh, oh, again, the Inanna. So this is the Revelation um, Revelation Stride. And then this is Sceptical. Uh, well, Sceptical I haven't gone over yet, I think. So he has two skills. One of them is when he's placed on Vanguard Circle, or placed on Rearguard Circle from hand though. You can Soul Blast one and choose a card with all my card name and reveal it. If you do search your deck for up to one 7,000 power card with a Brave Ability called to Rearguard Circle and shove your deck. So it's oddly specific, but also not that hard to achieve. Then GB1 Brave, when he attacks, he gets plus two K into that battle. So it doesn't stay for the turn, unfortunately, but still quite good. So that's a pretty nice card. I think we pulled one or two of him already, but I was going through something else uh, while I was when I when I pulled him last time. So that's why we didn't go over him. I see our triple rare is one that I'm quite happy to actually be accompanied by. I guess you can say, which is Mr. Old Mile. I know this is the reprint, the reprint of a Heavenly Decree Old Mile. So we have one reprint out of three boxes. So that's quite nice. I think that also shuts down the possibility of getting a Giza in this box. So. Tough luck, but definitely very nice. The reprint is appreciated. And then again, two rares that we've already seen, and I'm pretty sure for the commons it's the same case as well. So this old model is still, I'm actually not sure if he's still played. I think the new grade three uh, completely overtakes it because of how good it is. Uh, here's the effect heal for Genesis. Um, but I know some people still play him just for the sake of consistency, uh, while some people just choose to play that common that we went over earlier. So the Pictos, I think was called. 
So definitely quite nice. Oh yes, the card that I've been meaning to talk about this whole time. Shiranui Rine. I don't know why, but this is one of my most hyped cards in the set. And this is honestly a very big meta changer too. So, Dominate Act once per turn, Canvas 1 and Persona Flip. Your opponent chooses two cards from their hand, calls them to separate rearguard circles, and they get plus 5k until end of turn. Dominate them and attack your opponent's vanguard one at a time. Your opponent cannot activate the auto abilities of cards called due to this effect until the end of turn. So, if you're not gonna call cards against Shiranui, it will call those cards for you. That is just ridiculously strong. And the fact that it doesn't trigger the on-call abilities too is so good. Also, not just on-call, on attack, like any auto abilities are not triggered. So, super, super good. Plus, like, even on first try, you'll give them plus 5k. So even if they call a 4k trigger, you can still attack with a 9 and buff it up with either your starter or with the new Miss Frog to hit for numbers. So, very, very good. But, you know, if they for if you force them to call a trigger, they lose, you know, a 10k shield out of their hand. So it's like, a like even if they call the lowest power, they're still losing out on a massive, you know, advantage in hand. And then the GB3 is just the icing on the cake. All dominated units get plus 10k and plus 1 crit. That stays for the whole turn. Plus one crit, that is just so strong. I really like this card because the just ah, oh, it's so powerful. Plus, you know, I got a new grade three too, which like the Zanki, which is also very strong. I don't think we'll see it in this box because we got Tirine, but you know, that doesn't mean we can't, but I think the probability of it is quite low. Got another slap tail, so now we got uh, three for three on slap tails, which is also quite good because it is a staple in Muart. But man, the, the, the Rine is just so so strong. Oh, we actually got the other alt miles. So this is the other alt mile. So the the two of them have united. Um, well, not unite, more like brave. But anyway, this is High Deity Knight alt mile. He's got a bunch of gold. Like I love the coloring on his uh, just his actual like art. So he has two skills. Once per turn, when you ride him or you stride on top of him, you can soul blast the brave. If you do search your deck for up to one card with a brave ability not named him, call it to be your and shuffle your deck. Really important thing to note, this works on ride, meaning that there is a reason for you to ride up to grade three, even if you're going first, because you can be very aggressive without striding. So that's a really good thing to do. And I'm very happy with Bush Road that they're printing more cards like this, which actually force you to ride up to grade three and not stall on grade two, because you can do a lot with this guy. And then he has GB2 Brave, Vanguard and Rearguard Circles. Once you get attacked, if you have Vanguard with the Brave ability, he gets plus 5k and plus one crit until the end of that battle. So 16k attacker on his own with crit, what are you on? about this is such a good card i really really like him really strong searchable off the fetus so just overall a very good card so we have another angelica i think that's the second one that we have so we're i think we're out of the triple rares out of the reprints as well as uh i think we still have one more double if i'm not mistaken maybe two more i'm not sure with the double ratios uh nowadays but oops i mixed up and put some comments in here my bad so put the g guard put the uh mary block and then some commons, but nothing to note just now. So, hi, hi, ha! Like, man, those are two very important cards. Like, both this new old mile is very good for the deck, and like the Shiranui that I was I kept going on about is also just so 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 good. So sadly, we're not gonna get the Shiranui Great Three that I was hoping to see, but regardless, uh, very very strong start, and so I'm quite happy. We have another Gastil, so that's the second one. Very nice. I know. I know the Castile fans will be happy to see that. And now I think we're on our last pack, so maybe a Gize pack, but I highly doubt it because uh, I think with the old mile reprint being there, I think that uh, has a quite low chance of happening. But maybe another double rare. That is actually a possibility. So no Gize pack, but uh, <laughs> still a pretty nice thing. So we can see that it actually is a double rare, and it's going to be an effect heal, and it's the Nubatama one. So. That's gonna be it for the third box, and so quick recap, Nobutama heal, Gastille, Angelica, uh, Slaptail Dragon, the Genesis heal, as well as the Regalia Stride, and then for triple rares we have our 3 out of 3 Minerva, Shiranui Rine, which just, ah, I can't get over it, as well as the new Grade 3 Old Mile, which is also very strong, and then finally the reprint for the old Grade 3 Old Mile. So, I'm gonna quickly clean up, and we're just gonna wrap up this uh, you know, box opening and as well as quick set review. So that is going to be it for this box opening of Divine Dragon Apocrypha, which is GBT 14. Once again, big thank you to Bushroot for providing me with the product. I'm very happy to be, you know, opening this on their behalf as well, because honestly, this set is really, really good. And I think it might just be the best set ever printed. Like, I'm not just saying this out of like bias. I'm not saying this for any 
like reason that you may not think of or whatever I'm trying to say but this is actually one of the best sets because every single deck that's supporting this set is good and there's some decks that like weren't too relevant before that are good because of these friends over here so overall a very strong set and just uh just such a such a good thing to have in general honestly gbt14 really good set um if you're playing any of the clans highly recommend getting it if you're playing any of these of the clans supported by the zrs also recommend getting it because you know the zrs are going to be good for you so just overall really really nice so that's gonna be it for me today and once again big thank you to bush road for providing the product and i'll see you guys next time bye bye